So I'm just leaving the boat launch in Fort Snelling State Park in, uh, I think it's considered, it's here, St. Paul or Minneapolis right here. Um, and I had a hard time finding rivers that had enough water to paddle. And I was trying to avoid lakes. So I'm gonna do this short chunk of the Minnesota River where it goes up and around Pike Island and I'll be going to uh, where the Minnesota River connects to the Mississippi and then I'll be taking the Mississippi upstream around the I guess it would be the north side of Pike Island and um, then around and back here so this is the Minnesota River and on the left side of me is called Picnic Island. And I know the hiking trail around, Pic or around Pike Island, that says it's about three miles. So it'll probably be, you know, a little more than three miles to paddle around um, Pike Island and plus this little section that goes around Picnic Island and then there's a little piece of the Minnesota River that kind of runs right through there. But the current's moving pretty good. I mean it's not fast but it's moving pretty good. But it's slow enough that I'll be able to uh, should be able to paddle up it just fine coming back. So I'm gonna have to paddle back up this portion after I do that loop around Pike Island. But there's plenty of water here, so should be a decent paddle. So that's Pike Island in front of me. And to the left, the Minnesota River runs kind of around the island to get to the other side and joins, um, you know, going forward here, it'll join on the, what would be the east end of Pike Island. And right here, it, it'll go around and join on the west side of Pike Island with the Mississippi. But we'll be coming back through here. We'll be coming back through here on our way back. Yeah, it looks like there's plenty of water in there. But this is Pike Island here on the left. And all of this is right in the Fort Snelling State Park. So if you come to do this, paddle this trip and do this little loop around this island, um, at least leaving from where I left from, that's part of the state park system. So be prepared to pay uh, $7 to bring your vehicle in or if you have a yearly pass. Yeah, for anybody in the like Twin Cities area of Minnesota, there's no real rivers that you can paddle right now in the state. There's only a few that have water. Um, this is actually pretty good. It's listed on the DNR website as low. This is the Minnesota and the Mississippi at this point is listed as low. Although most of the rest of it is listed as scrapable. But this is still a good place to paddle. There's, I mean, I can't see the bottom. The water's a little too muddy to see how deep it is, but there's plenty of water here. right there looks 
kind of funny. It looks like it like grew its way out of the ground and took the ground up with it, or all the ground eroded out below it. So I'm just about to the point where this Minnesota River connects with the Mississippi. This is the easternmost point of Pike Island right here on my left. And this is where the Minnesota River connects with the uh, Mississippi. And it looks like the Mississippi is moving a little quicker than this river did. I may have wished that I would have went down that side and up this side because this wasn't moving that bad or that fast. But we're just about to where it connects. This is it right here. This is where the two connect. And now we head up the Mississippi. Oh, this is pretty shallow right here. You can see the water difference. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you can see that, how clear the Mississippi is compared to how dirty the Minnesota was. I would not have thought that. I can see the ground here. Over there, all I could see was muddy water. So I got out a bit and walked on Pike Island. Kind of a nice little island. They don't allow any motorized vehicles. They don't even allow uh, bicycles on it. Well, you can bring a bike on, but you can't actually pedal on it. And uh, getting back in over on this side was awfully muddy, so I had to take my shoes off. So we're getting stuck in the mud. Got all the houseboats right there. I got off the water, there's a whole bunch of geese crossing, like literally enough to fill across the across the river. So I'm right at the north, would be the northwest corner of Pike Island and the Mississippi continues upstream where I'm headed and right here um, I'm going to turn left to go along the west side of the Pike Island. Um, this is where the Minnesota River comes in. It's the second point in which the Minnesota River comes in. And so now there's just that little channel through to the other side and then upstream on the Minnesota for a little bit to get to back to the boat ramp. This is really cool through here. I'm still kind of going upstream. Although there isn't really much of a current. I think this is my favorite part of the whole, whole ride, although I prefer the narrower channels and rivers to like the big rivers, like Minnesota River, that was pretty wide. And obviously the Mississippi's really wide. 
but I prefer these narrower ones like this. And this is just like a little, you know, extra channel that runs from the Minnesota River over to the Mississippi. All in all, this has been a pretty good trip. Um, if you decide you want to do this, accessing Pike Island, you could do it from pretty much anywhere on the Mississippi side. On the Minnesota side, it got a little, I mean, it was higher bank. I don't know if you, I didn't really look for spots to get off, but I didn't really see any spots that you would have been able to get off if you wanted to either. Um, I would have maybe, if I'd have known, I'd have come through here and gone around down the Mississippi and up the Minnesota side because it looked like the current was not quite as strong on the Minnesota side as on the Mississippi. But the Mississippi wasn't, it wasn't too bad. I stayed really close to the shore and um, I moved at a pretty good, good pace, even going upstream. There was no boat traffic at all that I saw on the Minnesota side, on the Minnesota River, but the Mississippi, there were a lot of boats, um, speed boats and like yacht type boats, and uh, one kayaker I saw going down the Mississippi. But basically, on the Minnesota, I was there. I was pretty much by myself. But this is the bridge right here that we're gonna go under in a minute. This little bridge is a footbridge that runs from the like mainland, I guess you want to call it, uh, across over to Pike Island. And again, they don't let cars on it. You can bring a bike on. I don't even know if you can bring a bike on. You can't ride it for sure. You can probably bring it on there. You just can't ride it. But it's a cute little island very wooded nice dirt path that runs like pretty much around the edge of it uh, there were a lot of people jogging on it walking and people sitting i could see them just sitting on um, benches just you know watching the river that was on the minnesota side there was or on the mississippi side there wasn't as much of that on the minnesota side And right after I turn this corner up here, I'll be back on the Minnesota River, and then just have a little short ride up the Minnesota to the boat landing. But definitely this portion of this trip is my favorite part. Now I'm back by this big bridge and it reminds you that you're really just right in the city. For the pretty much that whole trip, aside from where I first started, which is just right around this corner right here, right under this bridge, you don't realize that you're literally right in the Twin Cities because it feels very, it doesn't feel like you're in the cities especially since Pike Island isn't, um, there's no buildings or anything on it. It's just literally just an island. So I'm gonna end this video here. And I guess I think my only suggestion on this would maybe be to, if you go out of the same boat launching, uh, boat launch that I did on Picnic Island, to come down through this channel, go down the Mississippi, and then, you know, come around the, the Pike Island and then go up, um, up the Minnesota instead of what I did was I went down the Minnesota and up the Mississippi, but I think it would probably be easier to do it the other way. Um, 
Although if you're going to stop and you want to get over halfway through your trip, you're better off going down the Minnesota side first because the Mississippi side, there's plenty of places along along the bank to stop on Pike Island and, you know, kind of hike up in there. Like literally the whole thing, you could pretty much exit anywhere on the Mississippi side of the island. So anyway, if you like this kind of stuff, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.